During this phase of the pre-flight, the entire interior of the airplane has been inspected for cleanliness and security of attachment. All oxygen outlets have been tested. Levels have been checked in both the anti-icer and hydraulic fluid reservoirs. The propellers have been pulled through and inspected. Instruments have been checked for cleanliness and static readings. Surface controls, trim tabs, and flaps have been checked. And all lights have been tested. These items comprise the interior inspection the second of the three main divisions of the pre-flight inspection. The third and final part of the pre-flight inspection is the engine check, which may be considered in two parts, warm-up and operational check. This test will be performed by the crew chief and one assistant inside the cockpit while the other assistant is kept posted outside. Engines are started as prescribed in the technical orders covering the B-17E airplane and its engines. All mechanics operating the engines are expected to be familiar with and to follow closely these instructions. Before starting engine number two, check the hydraulic pressure gauge for a reading between 600 and 750 and set the vacuum selector handle to left. After engine number two has been started, the flight indicator may be checked. With a vacuum reading of four inches of mercury, the indicator should settle in two minutes. Meanwhile, of course, the other engines are started. After each engine is running, turn its booster switch to off. To avoid vibration, do not idle below 900 RPM. Keep constant check on the instruments to see that all engines are running smoothly. Fuel pressure should be between 12 and 16 pounds. Oil pressure between 70 and 80. Oil temperature should remain between 70 and 88 and cylinder head temperature must not exceed 205 centigrade. When the engines are warm, the operational check may begin. With the propeller control set at high RPM and the superchargers in the off position, accelerate the engines and check the manifold pressure gauge to see that the needle moves freely. Make a full range operational check of the propeller controls by moving them from high RPM position to low RPM, observing the tachometer. Run the engines up to cruising speed. With the generator line switches on, the ammeter should indicate charge. Also, check the voltage of each generator. Then signal to the armorer and radio mechanic that it is all right to start the bomb bay and turret inspections and operate the transmitters. The fuel transfer pump is located at the rear of the cockpit. To test it, set both selector valves in any wing tank position. If no bomb bay tanks are installed, be sure the valves are not set to the bomb bay position. Set the switch to either of the on positions 
and place your hand on the pump, which is located beneath the catwalk, to make sure it's operating. With the switch in the other extreme position, test the reverse direction of the motor in the same way. When the test is completed, return the control switch to the mid position and the selector valves to off. Test the operation of the engines on each magneto, noting loss of RPM. Then, at about one-third throttle, turn the ignition switch off to see that it's working. It must be turned back on immediately. The vacuum pumps are tested by setting the selector on left and right and checking the vacuum pressure gauge. The heater control is operated to the limits to check range of movement. Test the de-icer mechanism and have the observer outside check the functioning of all cells along the wings, horizontal stabilizer, and vertical fin. Finally, with the propellers at high RPM, Open the throttle full and test the superchargers by moving the regulators far enough to show an increase in manifold pressure. This increase indicates that the supercharger is functioning. When this test has been made individually with each of the four regulators, the engine check is complete. In review, this engine check has consisted of two parts. During warm-up, the engine instruments are checked to see that the engines are functioning properly. Operational checks are made of propellers, throttles, magnetos, superchargers, and the fuel transfer pump. Thus is completed the entire pre-flight inspection consisting of the exterior inspection, the interior inspection, and the engine check. After making sure that the armorer has completed his bomb bay and turret inspections, and the radio mechanic has checked the transmitter, the engines may be stopped in accordance with the procedure set forth in the technical orders. After checking with his assistants and verifying that the auxiliary equipment is in order, the crew chief signs the flight report. Usually, little trouble shows up during the pre-flight inspection. However, an occasional defect is bound to develop. A broken static ground. A loose fire extinguisher. A faulty oxygen regulator a loose cannon plug, a leaky brake hose. It might be anything, and it might be fatal. Such faults must be caught on the pre-flight inspection, and they must be corrected or marked on the flight report. Thus, when the crew chief has done his job right, the true condition of the airplane will be apparent to the pilot before takeoff.